art medium, Authentico art medium, a fabulous method of transferring images from paper onto furniture. All you have to do is get your item, whatever it is you've actually decided you want to transfer, make sure it's flipped over so it's in reverse, otherwise when you stick it on it's going to be back to front, and you need to coat it with the glue, with the art medium, it's like, it's like very much like UPVA glue to work with. And spread it all over the image, keep the image down, try not to get it on the reverse because if you do, it will actually uh, stop the paper from coming off because it will seal it from the other side. So right up to the edges, all the way around, make sure it's covered because if it's not stuck down it won't stay there. Okay, and then you pop that onto your board or whatever surface it is you want it to actually stick to, like so. And then you have to leave it overnight. Just make sure it's stuck down nice and firm. That's perfect. Okay. And then tomorrow we'll be able to take the paper off and leave the uh, printed image on the board. Well, that's the theory. Okay. Now, this is what we actually like to do with this stuff. Transferring images onto furniture. I've got the fire screen here and we're going to do exactly the same thing, coat it with art medium and stick it on here. Got to make sure we cover the whole thing, not to get too much on because if you get too much on it all loses out the side. But at the same time, it needs a good covering to make sure it permeates the ink. And when you take it off, your image is where you want it. I'm not too worried about the actual glue getting on the board, as long as the whole image is covered. Okay. So... Probably not in the middle, but then nothing ever is when I do it. Okay. So that bit's stuck on. And the other half of the image, I've actually marked the back of this drawing because I've trimmed it to make sure I can match it up exactly when I turn it over. I have two little tiny pencil marks there that I can match up on the other side. Just make sure that when I do put the two together, they're not disjointed, and that's the theory. Okay, lots of glue. I'm going to cover all the text, because that's the most important part. When we take it off tomorrow, the longer you can leave it to dry, the better. Or as I say, we usually, yeah, or we always at least leave it overnight. It won't hurt if you leave it longer. And God, it's messy. But such fun. And the results from these, though, are really quite, uh, quite breathtaking on the right piece of furniture. Absolutely stunning. So it's worth all the messing around. And a lot quicker than having to do it all by hand. Okay, I'm going to get this bit right. So lining up the two pencil marks and the seams which should be around about the same as I cut the two pieces together. And then smoothing it on from the bottom, trying not to get any creases. That's it. A bit like applying vinyl signs. And it's on. Okay, as before, the two pieces are absolutely making a matching up wallpaper. And that was easy on this bit because you can't get a flat surface, but it will ensure that it's completely stuck on. 
it's a case of leaving it overnight to make sure it's entirely dry for the next step. And so for the next step, now that he's had a chance to go off overnight, um, we're looking at taking the backing paper or the paper element of what's on these boards off. So quite simple. Take a sponge and you wet down the board. As soon as you start to wet it, you'll see it's going slightly transparent. When you start to see the lettering coming through, it's wet enough. So just keep dabbing the water on, not too much, because it gets really, really sodden, it could actually start to dissolve the glue. It shouldn't, but I've, I've have seen that happen. So, dabbing away, you start to see the lettering showing through the paper. This is a bit where the patience comes in, and I don't always get this right. And to remove the paper, all you have to do is work your finger gently across the top, like so, and it just comes off. Now when you get to the edges, it does actually work better if you roll away from the middle of the print, just so that you don't lift them up. If you do get a bit enthusiastic, uh, it, uh, it, sometimes you want to do it too quickly and it just all comes off and the lettering will come off with it. Now, there are classes all over the UK where you can have a go at this if you don't fancy trying it at home. And I think there's something like 150 plus dealers now who offer not just selling the products from the Authentico range, but also do classes. Um, as we do here, and you can go and have a go. You can have a go at painting and waxing, distressing, all the different things that we can do. Uh, the advanced classes I will show you how to use the Terra Piano and the various other styles of paint that are available. Um, and it's just a case if you go online, go onto the Authentico website, and the list of dealers will be there. So there's no excuses, everyone and everyone can have a go at this. And it really is that simple. Okay, so as you can see, paper's rolling off. So you need to just keep it nice and moist. And keep working that. Sometimes I think it's actually better if you do as much as you dare. You think you've got it all off and then when it dries, you notice there's some sort of whiter patches, which means you haven't got all the paper off. Now, I didn't think it was actually that robust until I tried to clean one of these off the other day. I was going to reuse the board for the next, uh, the next paint class. Um, and when I scrubbed it with a green scourer, the paint all around it came off, but the lettering didn't. So it's obviously a lot more robust than it looks. So just clean the area off. Now, there's still paper there. I can see the outline of it. I don't know if you can pick that up. So what you need to do is just go through the process again. So wet it slightly and just keep working on it until you're left. As I'm rolling here, I can feel the paper coming up under my finger, so I know there's still bits and pieces there. But this is how simple it is. It just takes a little bit of patience. And eventually, bits of lettering will come off. Um, I wouldn't worry about it, it just adds to the distressed effect. So again, clean the area off. And as you can see, you have almost no paper left. It'll take a while to get all of it off. There's a little bit around here, you can still see. So if I start rolling it again, it's coming off there. And there you have a rather gorgeous looking logo on whatever you decide to stick it on. So whether that be drawer fronts, a cupboard, a tray, anything you like. You can stick it on flower pots, you can use colour pictures. It doesn't matter, it's the only thing, any limitations really are your imagination. This is a slightly different one because there's a different typographic. It's not quite as crisp. 
so the effect will be slightly more muted. But the same way, exactly the same method, soak it up. This one's just going to take a little bit longer to do. So nice and wet, and then just start with the fingers. If you're feeling adventurous, you can do it a little bit harder, but it may just lift up the pattern. Uh, there it comes. Now what I've actually done with this piece is I've put a coat of grey over white and sanded it to give it that little bit more of a distressed look because I knew the logo was going to look a little different. Plus it's on a, a grey background. Now you can see there it's just lifted. It's come right up. This is what happens if it's a bit too much rubbing. We just lift the whole thing off. Or either that or the glue wasn't quite properly properly applied. I wanted to show you this one because I had a feeling it was going to react a little differently. As I said, the crisper the logo, the crisper the um, after effect will be. Um, but as you can probably see, it's still a very nice, nice effect, even with bits missing. As you can see, it uh, took a bit of time and you can start to work it right back down to the ink. I've lost quite a bit of this one. Could be for any number of reasons. I've been too heavy handed or it wasn't quite stuck on properly. Um, different designs have a different uh, amount of ink in them, I've noticed. So something that's faint or quite fine. Um, more faint isn't necessarily going to stick as well as something that's a lot heavier. I mean, this is quite a dark design, so that's a really good one to use. That one's available on the graphics very free. You can go in there and download it. Lovely lady. Provides all sorts of graphics that you can use for nothing. Um, this particular one I'm using at the moment was one I dug out from a French uh, site somewhere quite a while ago. Um, and it's not really as suitable, but I did want to show you the difference between something that is much more suitable for the job. Um, and when you look at it on the paper, the design's crisper, so it's a lot easier for something like that. Uh, and you can work that quite hard and it won't come off at all. Whereas something that's quite pale and quite um, faint, like this one, see the paper's still coming off, just going to be really patient with the bigger designs but something like this on a coffee table um, once it's actually done and it's stuck on and you've sealed it it's going nowhere it's uh, it's there and it just looks fantastic it's a real centerpiece um, and you can put it on any sort of furniture absolutely any flat panel um, as i say i prefer to actually stick them on to a chalk paint base this one's been painted in in fact this one's on velvet because um, one of the things I did notice when I was scrubbing at the other designs is if I scrub too hard I take the paint off as well um, but that's with the vintage so on a velvet base it's starting to come through but uh, if this is going to be one of those ones I let dry and then have another look at uh, and then I can see where there's more paper it just dries white so you can see where the paper is and then you simply wet it down again gently work at it until you're happy but it's where you want it to be. And I think you'll agree that actually looks quite good. So imagine that design on anything really, on a cupboard door, um, on any sort of piece of furniture, on a wardrobe maybe. The graphics are as big as you make them, so it's entirely up to you how big you print things. Sometimes you may find they pixelate slightly if you make them too big. Uh, but it's uh, another fantastic product that I can't stop playing with. I think you'll agree.